Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with the feature race here from round 3 of the F123 Ollie Behrman career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here in Alba Park once more. Of course, if you missed out on the video that went live yesterday, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. But yeah, today we are ready then for the feature race. Another 16 laps here from Alba Park. But of course for this one... We're starting from pole position here. Can we try and get a good race under our belt? Let's do this thing. Welcome to Australia. Welcome to Albert Park. It will be the first time for some of these drivers to race around this famous circuit. Whether it's your first time here or whether you're a veteran, you're very welcome. It's a new addition to the Formula 2 calendar. Albert Park has been an iconic F1 circuit for years. Recently remodeled to encourage tighter racing on track, it is 3.28 miles, 14 turns instead of the original 16. That means it's five to the left and nine to the right with three DRS zones. Here is the grid for today's race, which will be starting shortly. Ollie Behrman lines up on pole position. Theo Porcher starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Cordial, Awasa, Enzo Fittipaldi, Hauga, Benavides, Vesti, Deruva, Victor Martins, Novelak, Duan, Zane Maloney, Isaac Hadjar, Crawford, Nisani, Gashaw, and Ralph Boschon. Correa, Leclerc, Miney, and Roman Stanek completes the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Davide, is there anything we should be looking for in today's race? The teams are all very competitive at the moment, so are we about to witness a push from anyone in particular? Hi, Alex. The team will have been studying everyone else out there very carefully. So I think we are in for a very interesting event today. I can't wait to see how this race unfolds. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Right, well, here we are then. Trackside ready for the Australian GP sprint race then. The feature race even, sorry, of course. And look at that. They want us to do one lap on the medium tyres at the end of the race. However, I probably can't set it up. I'm going to try and do that in the middle of the GP. It's quite a risky strategy. Of course, if we get a safety car, then it might be worth doing it then. Um, but obviously just allows us to open up strategy at either end of the race. So that's the plan of action today. And um, we're going to try and see how well we can make that work. But lining up on the pole for the first time ever in FIA Formula 2. Five red lights. Let's light so. And away we go. They're in a really good start, actually. To make our way down in towards turn one. Just keep it clean and tidy there. And look at that free track as we round our way through the first couple of corners. Of course, we saw a rather odd pace kind of split yesterday in the sprint race. So, going to be very, very careful of that early on. But, of course, just need to try and make sure that we get these uh, super soft tyres up to speed as early as possible. So, we're just going to set the car up as well so the team know... Um, that we're going to be going on to those mediums at the pit stop, so I don't forget about it later on in the GP. But yeah, 17 laps, though, does feel like quite a mammoth task here in Albert Park, Australia. You know, the, the pace on Friday night felt fantastic. Lacked a little bit yesterday in the sprint race there, which has kind of knocked my confidence slightly. Um, but yeah, big race here today. But obviously, Elevate is up the championship order, of course. We know, you know, there's probably a couple of cars towards the rear of the fields, um, you know, that might just be able to go a bit cheeky um, with the tyre strategy. But even then, to be honest, I don't think anyone is comfortably actually going to be able to do a one-stop here. So we just want to try and push early on, you know, if we get a safety car, if we get a red flag, um, try and have our strategy ready to adjust to that as and when we need it. So yeah, heading through there. Oh, take a poor chair. Going to give me a nice little push to finish off lap one but yeah round on our way through the last couple of corners though that's pretty much exactly what we need to do off the start of the grand prix and that is hold the lead here but for chair still only eight tenths back he is going to be absolutely hounding me of course has taken those two sprint race victories so far this season but is yet to get a feature race dub will that change today i for our sake hope Staggering just how much better the super soft tyres feel here than the mediums did yesterday. Yes, I know 
Obviously, we're only on lap two, and I'm sure these will absolutely hit the cliff well, at some point this afternoon as just trying to avoid that inside curbing down into the final sector. That, I reckon, is probably the only reprofiled corner around here um, that I'm not a fan of, and it is solely because of that inside curb. Give it a nice normal curb, I'd probably love it, but, yeah, it really does upset the rhythm uh, and kind of, yeah, it's a very, very distorted corner relative to the rest of the lap. You know, most of Albert Park is all about attacking the curbs. Um, but, of course, through there, you just can't. So a little bit wide through turn one, and then it's so difficult to try and drag the throttle back on. I must admit, from a pure driving standpoint, with the way these F2 cars handle, um, Albert Park is not best suited to them. Where a lot of these corners, you know, you're trying to modulate the throttle on exit, and obviously on these F2 cars, it is all about getting the turbo spool. It does feel very, very hindered, but DRS now enabled. Surprised that we can get told that by our engineer. So Teo Porcher, I'm sure, is going to be hungry as we head down the back straight. Are we going to see that Frenchman get close enough? This has been an interesting test to see how competitive we are down the straight. You can see that gap actually floating around a bit. Or chair there just cannot get close enough. That's reassuring early on in the day. Yellows, yellows, someone's going slowly. Car it further back down the order, I think. Definitely not Teo Porcher. Who is that then going to be our first casualty of the feature race? Is that a Trident? I think it might be. Don't say. Is it is it gonna be Clermont Novelac for the second time in three weekends? I think it might be, it's definitely a Trident. It is Clement Novelak out again. Of yet another race this season, of course, retired. It was our first retirement of the campaign back in the Bahrain GP sprint weekend. Of course, helped him then have a really, really good result uh, in the feature race back in Sakir. But again, another mechanical failure. Trident need to get on top of that with these Mechachrome engines. Got more yellows, another car going slowly. I think that might be an MP Motorsport this time round. Too sure who that's going to be then as we make our way through the first couple of corners. Definitely might actually, yeah, I think it is an MP. It's definitely not a Van Ammer Sport. As are we therefore going to see a safety car? No, it looks like Clem's car has been picked up and taken off of the circuit. But yeah, another mechanical failure then. Who is it? Oh, it's Jan Deruval, a heartbreak for the Indian. Who is our second casualty in two laps? Oh, this is critical though. Starting lap six, we've now actually got Porcher out of the DRS range there as Darubala's car just gets moved behind the wall as we make our way through turn one. But this could allow us just a little bit of freedom, allow us a tiny bit of flexibility in the strategy here. What I'm going to try and do is get the tyres actually to the end of lap nine. Then obviously go on the mediums for one lap and then bolt on our second set of the super softs to go to the end of the afternoon. Just because I'm sort of thinking, you know, the other set did that qualifying lap on Friday night. And it's not that the tyre wear is appalling around here, but it's certainly not great. So if we can do nine laps on each stint rather than eight, eight and one, then we will be in a slightly better position. It really is just a game of small margins with these F2 cards, you know, where they are all identical to each other in terms of theoretical performance. But poor chair, yeah, is really, really dropping back at the moment. That gap now, 1.7 seconds. I must say, though, the margin we're starting to pull on Teo poor chair here. These soft, uh, super soft tyres working so much better than the mediums did yesterday for us. And they're just allowing me to have that confidence in the fact that we might not get undercut here that we might have the pace this afternoon. You know, I'd love to finally try and get our first win of the campaign on the board. You know, I think in real Formula 2, Behrman didn't actually score until his undefeated and flawless weekend in Baku. So if we can score a dub before then, that would be absolutely fantastic. Looks like Cordiel and Porsche, though, battling behind us. This just allows us to pull out that little extra bits of time. I think I've worked out then why the AI haven't been able to keep up with me. I don't think it's Cordiel. Oh, sorry, I don't think it's my pace at all. I think it's Paul Chair slowing everybody up there. Cordiel has jumped him and has immediately pretty much pulled a second on him. So we're going to have to monitor that gap, though, to Amory 
through this next lap or so, but it might be now where we start to see some AI diving into the pit lane. Don't know whether 8 or 9 will be their preferred lap of choice. Still obviously a little bit conscious about when Fred Vesti is going to try and peel in, but making our way out of that final corner. There we go, Cordiel's in. Handful of cars close behind him, of course, are also very conscious of obviously having the first box in the pit lane. We are very, very susceptible to being jumped, but looks like Fred Vesti isn't peeling into the pit lane then. We, however, will be boxing at the end of this lap. We go tire where warning light just flashing up, though, as we make our way in towards the final couple of corners, but the gap to Porsche now up to four seconds. Such a weird weekend in terms of the pace there. That was a lot of curb to make our way in towards the final few corners. But yeah, just as I was starting to speak high praises and thinking about how well these tyres have hung on, definitely now have started to hit the cliff. But as we make our way then or into the pit lane, that was very, very close on the entry. Make sure we get it slowed down. Just about there. Able to get the car stopped. Fred Vesti, I've told the team I'm boxing. If he's going to screw himself over, then be my guest. But onto those mediums. Oh, we're going to get a little bit held up by some other cars. Of course, we're just going to do the one lap on these tyres. And then head back out there. Then as where is Amory Cordiel in all of this? He's a little way further behind. It's actually... Uh, Dennis... No, it's Argemani, isn't it? Who, of course, had that mechanical failure yesterday, I believe. He's obviously staying out there one more lap, but we're just going to do one lap on these tyres. It's an utterly ridiculous strategy. Looks like Cordiel did get a bit of an undercut on me by virtue of those slower cars holding me up. So you can see Cordiel runs into the back of me. We got a nice little rear locking for our troubles. But this is so weird. The strategies you've got to employ inside the F2 2023 game mode are utterly bizarre. Will Cordial, though, get down the inside? I'd love to try and claim a bit of DRS if he does, but no. He's just too slow on the exit of the corner there. Argemani is gaining out of this one. And we make our way down the back straight then. To be honest, I think we've just got to try and get our elbows out against Cordial. There he has a look around the outside, but can't quite make it work. Head down in towards this next chicane, though. I mean, yeah, even if Miney can go to the end, of course, we've only got to try and take four seconds out of him on softer tyres there. So that should surely be possible towards the end of the race. As here again goes Cordial. I'm staggered, to be honest, with just how well these mediums have hung on on this lap. But we'll slot in behind the Belgian. Definitely slowed him up a little bit on this lap there, which might help us out towards the end of the race. But effectively now, we're on a big undercut against the AI to the end of the afternoon. Cush into the pit lane. So, oh, that was very, very scary again. Just a little bit nervous about locking up. But how weird is this? The fact you've got to go for a double pit stop inside two laps here. 4.1. Definitely took a lot longer than that as Arthur Leclerc He's going to be out a little bit in front. But yeah, I think Maney's going to be the one we're really focusing on over these next few laps there as we're going to come out behind Asani and Stanek. Will we be ahead of Correa? Was had that spin yesterday and has really that confidence since. Yes, we will. So let's try and chase after the Campos. Of course, this is quite a risky strategy. Uh, if we get a safety car in the second half of this race, uh, we're, we're basically out. Like, we are screwed entirely. Unless the AI don't... Actually, no, we might be all right. Because if the AI pit, of course, they'll have to use mediums. And then they'll be on a dead set of mediums anyway. So they would just be sitting ducks. Uh, we have obviously got that other set of the used super softs. So I don't... Yeah, I don't think... Even if we got a safety car here, we'd probably still be in good place. Oh, we took closer three seconds out of Miney that last lap. So hopefully now we're going to be able to try and get a run on him out onto the back straight there. I mean, early on in this stint, understandably we should have quite the grip advantage and I'm not really sure oh no he must he had to obviously extend his super soft stint didn't he obviously to get these tires to the end because obviously they weren't even fresh on the campos there so he was kind of forced into it so he didn't even go on to a fresh set of the medium tires here but we'll have the drs as you make our way out onto the back straight i'm trying to just work out what the gaps are to the front runners still as we approach almost 200 miles an hour there you can see 
How much later we can get on the brakes into the chicane. How much earlier we can get back on the loud pedal as well on the exit. Miney's going to try and go defensive on me around the outside. We'll look, though. Superior braking performance there. Around the outside we go. I think Miney just accepting a course at the moment. This is not a battle that he needs to get too enveloped in. But if he can hang inside my slipstream and my DRS to the end, we could still drag him on to a pretty decent result here. This is all going to come down to the final laps. Got three laps to go then. And the fact that at the moment we're in P18, yet we know we're in the fight for the win, says everything you need to know about just how ridiculous Formula 2 is on this game. 15 seconds. 15 seconds behind Fred, though. I mean, we are still running, I believe, marginally quicker than the AI at the moment. Really now learning about how to let the car slide off the corners here in Albert Park. But, yeah, will we be able to get to the end of the race in one piece? Will we get the jump? Of course, we're kind of hoping as well um, for a little bit of pit lane confusion behind between the AI. Also, will any of them pit this lap because obviously they don't want to double stack with their teammates. A lot of questions still left to be decided here. It's a risky play we've gone with, but I'm hoping it's going to pay off. There we go. We've got a few AI into the pit lane then, including Fred. Oh, not clearly okay, on talking Frederick terms. In the pits. In the pits. There we go. Mark clearly finding these things out after I have. So now it's important that we see if we're in front of all of the AI that are boxing this lap. I mean, even if we're not, they're going to be on dead sets of the medium compound tyres, but there is Teo Porcher, and we are out in front of him. He's got two laps to do on a very worn out set of mediums. Someone's managed to slip through the cracks. I think we're going to see every other AI car pit then at the end of this lap. Otherwise, they're going to face disqualification, but Porcher, he's lost two seconds to me already on this lap here, so I wonder if staying out the extra one is going to allow a lot of the AI to actually overcut each other, which is all but unheard of inside the F123 game. But rounding our way then, by the final corner to start the last lap here. I think Cordiel is still out in P2. I think we'll have the jump on him. Yes, we will. Into the lead we go. And it's looking comfortable on, miraculously, fresher tyres than any of the AI have bolted onto. At the end of this race there, Cordiel is already four seconds back. Looks like Fittipaldi and Crawford as well as Benavidez are all going to gain out of this quite nicely as well in the process by just staying out for as long as they could on those super soft tyres and doing the bare minimum that they have to here on the mediums. But as we make our way around the final lap here in Albert Park, like I said, it was a risky strategy, but has absolutely paid dividends today. And all that work was done yesterday weirdly, by not being quick enough to keep up with the cars in front. We didn't have the dirty air. We were really allowed to nurse those tyres throughout most of the sprint race because we knew it would be important today and it really was one of those ones where we sacrificed the sprint race there, of course, to try and take big points home in the feature race here and 25 is certainly a bigger number than 10 as we make our way down in towards the final couple of corners of the Australian GP feature race there. It's the first time Formula 2 have come to the land down under. I believe it'll be my first victory as well around Albert Park inside F123. Round in the final couple of corners. We are going to be victorious here by a good six second margin as we make our way out of the final corner. Ollie Behrman is a Formula 2 race winner. Oh, superb driving. That is the race win, my friend. Well done. So, another excellent win from Bremer. Davide, what do you think made the difference here? It was down to one thing. Consistent pace over everyone else out there on the track. We could spend a great deal of time talking about race and tire strategy, what has occurred on the track, but at the end of the day, the difference here was down to simply being faster on track than everyone else. Amazing skill on show. As we look back on a thrilling race here today, we can now see the drivers take their places on the podium. It's a familiar sight by now, as it's another successful F2 win for Prane.
now, let's take a look at the driver's stand. Amory Cordillo takes the lead in the Drivers' Championship. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? Lots of driver impressed me today, Alex. But if I have to say one that impressed me most, it's only Berman. On to the teams then. ART have extended their lead over the championship. Meanwhile, Carlin move up the table with another strong performance this weekend. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Well, there we are then, the end of the Formula 2 race here from Albert Park. And look at that, at the end of the weekend as well, Ollie Behrman top of the points standings. We absolutely love to see it there. Results-wise, though, Amory Cordiel did just about hang on for P2 in the end there. And yeah, Kushmine is the first time this season the one-stop really has not worked out. I mean, he still gained 10 places, um, but when every other race has been won by the driver able to do that. It was just not the way to go for him today there. Fittipaldi P3, like we said, ahead of both of the Americans, Crawford and Benavides. Uh, the Frenchmans of Victor Martins and Theo Porsche ahead of Vashore, Hauger and Zane Maloney rounding out our point scorers here today. It means championship-wise, we take a big leap up into P5 overall of the standings. Amory Cordiel will head into the short break before Baku with a three-point lead over both Benavides and Victor Martins as well there. But yeah, really, really happy with that. Finally able to showcase the pace that we've got in these Formula 2 cars there. Prima as well. We leapfrog from 10th all the way up to 6th with that one as well. They're just 5 points back behind MP there. But it is ART still 21 points clear. They are going to be difficult to beat. I feel like this season. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. And we will be back then next weekend. Ready for Formula 2 to head to Baku. You guys do not want to miss that. A massive thank you to all of my YouTube members and my Patreon supporters for their continued donations to help my work. These things go much further than I think a lot of you ever realise and allow me to continue making content full-time here on YouTube. So if you want to support me from as little as £1 a month and be featured on all of these end clips, either click the join button next to the subscribe or head over to my Patreon. There's a link down in the description.